Well, good morning and welcome to the Sixth Form Open Morning. It's brilliant that you can join us today. Um, of course, I'd rather you were here in person. I'd rather be seeing you face to face. But this is the next best option. And I hope you're going to find it a really valuable experience as you begin to think about the future and what might lie ahead, whether you're doing that as a student or as a parent of a student who is about to embark upon that fantastic adventure uh, ahead of them. So what are we going to be doing over the course of the morning? Well, we're going to be focusing on these guys because they're the people who are important. They're the people who this is all about. I'm being attacked by a daddy long legs as I record this. So my apologies if I suddenly sound distracted. So all about these students and all about the brilliant, but also quite scary uh, possibilities that lie ahead. And we're talking about what's going to be happening in the sixth form, what it's going to be like to be a student in the sixth form, and what it's going to be like to embarking upon study in a very, very different context and a very, very different format to what students are obviously used to at the moment. After I've spoken, I'm going to be passing over to my colleague, Miss Sutton, who's going to be talking a bit more generally about what life is like as a sixth former. I'm also going to be passing on to Mr. Abrams, who's the assistant head for teaching and learning. He's going to be thinking a little bit about what might, might lie after school. And that's also the focus of Miss Franks, who is in charge of employability and careers at the school. And she's somebody who's brilliantly helpful for all students as they begin to start thinking about what might happen when they leave school. Now, leaving school might sound like a pretty terrifying uh, thing if you're a parent, because it seems like only five minutes ago that your children were lovely and young and just starting out a play group, and now they're not so lovely, and not so young, and their playing is sometimes a little bit different. They might be a bit like Kevin the teenager, and they might have rather exciting Saturday nights out with their friends, and you might be thinking, oh my goodness me, what has happened to that sweet young child I once knew? If you know the film Inside Out, and if you don't know it, you should. It's fantastic. There's that fantastic scene in it where childish things are pushed over the edge of a cliff. And uh, it's all part of growing up, saying goodbye to childlike uh, remains. And I think that's in some ways something that can be quite sad. Of course it can be. But it's also something wonderful. And that, that journey of becoming an adult is, is a fantastic thing that should be celebrated. And part of that is pushing away some of the subjects that you've not enjoyed studying and instead focusing, hopefully, on things that you can enjoy and you can feel chime much more with your own interests. Now, I'm going to share this picture with you. Some of you may have seen it before. It, it's me. It's when I was a bit younger, when I was sort of the age that some of your children are now. And I'm sharing it with you just as a reminder 
that myself and I'm sure all of the parents as well who are watching this, all of us at one stage were fairly revolting. I was, I wanted to be the lead singer of The Cure. I wanted to stick things in my ears. I wanted to have ridiculous hair. And it was part of being 16 years old, 17 years old. And I share that just as a reminder that when we get exasperated by our own children, when we get exasperated by the fact that they find things important that we might not see as being so important, they're only doing what we ourselves did at a similar stage. Now, a question I often ask myself is, is the one that's the brilliant title of this, this history of the school written by Roger Perry, our first headmaster. And that question, why does anybody want to go to your school? It's a question I ask myself pretty much all the time. I have to. It's my, it's my job to be constantly wondering that very thing. And part of it is, of course, to do with academic results, although it's not really about league tables. It's not really about just totting up those results. And of course, this year's results were, were, were slightly different because they came from centre assessment rather than by terminal exam. Nonetheless, I show you those results because I think it's really important to emphasise that good students do really well at beads. Students get fantastic grades. And this year, even with all the excitement that was caused by the centre assessment grade uh, fun and games that we had in the summer, 90 plus percent of our students went on to their first choice university. So students do well. But even that phrase, doing well, raises all sorts of interesting questions. What does it actually mean? What do we mean when we say someone's done well? And so the, the one league table I do like to look at is that which is produced to show the value added that students attain during their sixth form career. And over the last five years, we have come in the top 90 out of all the schools in the UK offering sixth form provision. There are 3,000 of them. Four out of the last five years, we've come in the top 90. In other words, it doesn't matter where you're starting, it's looking at, at your end point and seeing how much progress you've made. So of course, for some students to get fantastic results is a wonderful thing, but they were always going to do that. For some students, it's a real uh, a sign of the progress they've made. And that's what's measured in that value added league table, which I do think says something about the way in which students are helped and nurtured here. So partly it's about great academic results, but it's also about that care that students have, which I would say now more than ever is vital. Being 16 years old is difficult. It was difficult when I was 16 years old, and believe me, it's a whole lot more difficult now. But because we look after children well, we help them to see their way through those difficult years, and hopefully to emerge at the end of it stronger, and better able to cope with all the difficulties that life is gonna throw at them. And that's partly through the whole health and wellbeing centre team, it's partly through having tutors and house masters and house mistresses who know each child well. And it's partly on the whole emphasis of the school on being kind, on looking after each other, on remembering what is important. And then alongside the academic results, alongside the pastoral care, there's also what happens outside the classroom. And that, to me, is what being at school is about. It's about being involved in activities, whatever those activities might be, whether it's wine making or music or down and walking or indeed anything else. And of course, some of those activities have had to be a bit different recently for one reason or another. I love this photograph of the, uh, the sixth form drama activity last term, online, uh, being inventive, being creative, making sure that we don't allow a worldwide pandemic stop us from doing all the things that we want to be able to do. So how does a sixth form career look? Well, most of our students do take three A-levels or A-level equivalent courses. And it's worth a quick word about BTECs. BTECs are vocational courses. We offer them in a variety of different subject areas, in business, in media, in sport, in IT, in animal management, in music. And I'm sure I've probably forgotten at least one as well. And those vocational courses are absolutely perfect for a certain group of students. If you don't like end of course exams, those vocational courses are good for you because the majority of the marks in them are accrued over the course of the two years. If you, if you like getting your hands dirty and actually doing stuff, those vocational courses are perfect for you. And are they accepted in the same way that A-levels are? Well, absolutely. The overwhelming majority of universities will indeed accept uh, BTEC courses alongside A-levels. I've just put the numbers there to show you the sort of proportions of people 
who are taking these courses. And alongside those as well, a much smaller number during the pre-U, which is the course we offer in English and in music. Uh, so that's a course, it's a bit like a traditional old fashioned day level in some ways. In, in the eyes of the universities though, it doesn't really matter what courses a student is undertaking. And nor surprisingly, does it matter how many courses as long as you've got your basic three. Having said that, some students do take four. And there are sometimes good reasons for doing so. It could be that you want to do a particular program that needs you to do four A-levels. It could be that you've got so much you want to do, so much that you're interested in, or it could be a very useful insurance policy. You want to have a go at a particular A-level, you're not sure if you're going to be able to succeed in it, so you have a safety option just in case you don't uh, manage to fulfill the whole of that course. So there are reasons why people will do four, if you only do three, which is, as I stress and emphasize, all you need to do, and it's the standard package, alongside that, students will do something else, a project qualification, a sports leaders qualification, something like that, to give them a bit of extra address to their mill. So alongside those, uh, those various uh, points of information, you should know that you're gonna be doing five hours a week for each subject that you study, worth bearing in mind, really, really important to choose subjects that you enjoy doing because five hours a week is a long old time. But alongside that, there's that full involvement in school life. It's not just a question of doing your academic courses and then going home. It's about being fully involved, being busier than ever, and also having that full contact with the community of the school. So, Making choices is what this morning and what this time is about. When I made my A-level choices many, many years ago, I read an interview in Smash Hits magazine with Everything But The Girl, one of my favorite bands at the time. And Tracy Thorne, the singer, uh, listed the A-levels that she had studied. And my thought process went, I quite like their music. She seems quite intelligent. I'll do the same A-levels that she has chosen. Now, hopefully our students today will have a slightly better way choosing their qualifications, choosing the way they're going to pick what lies ahead. And they might instead turn to a fantastic 1990s TV classic, Ready Steady Cook. And the reason I mentioned Ready Steady Cook, those of you who remember this fantastic TV show will know that the premise was that people were given a bag full of shopping and they had to turn that shopping into a meal. And the problem was if you had asparagus and custard and tuna, all fine ingredients by themselves, they didn't necessarily mix together, and hence the, the fun and game started. And it's the same with A-level courses. There are lots and lots of courses out there. They're all brilliant in their own way. They're all fantastic for the right students, but some of them don't necessarily knit together. So a really important part of the process is making sure that whatever choices a student makes, those qualifications knit together to enable that student to go on and do brilliant things after they leave school. So I'm gonna give one very, very small example. If you want to study economics at university, for example, you need to have maths at A-level, usually. So as well as doing economics A-level, you probably need to do maths A-level too, if you want to go on and study economics at a higher level. So it's making sure that you have subjects that knit together, that will allow you to open as many doors as possible in the post-school world. Another thing I'd say when it comes to making choices is that, and this goes to the students who, who are listening this morning, you've got to listen to your parents. Your parents know stuff, they know you. You may imagine that your parents know nothing. You may imagine that your parents uh, have absolutely no idea about anything whatsoever, but sometimes, occasionally, they do know what they're talking about. So please listen to your parents. And the other people it's worth listening to are your teachers. Teachers too, occasionally might give the impression they know nothing, but believe me, they don't. They do know something and they're worth hearing their opinion. But as with all bits of advice that you were given, you listen to it, you take it on board, you think about it, but ultimately as a student, it's you who has to make that decision for yourself. It's your future after all that we're talking about. So please, as a student, talk. Talk with your parents, talk with your teachers, talk with your friends, talk with older students in the years above you who are already taking these subjects. Please make the most of the fantastic website which has been put together, which includes some brilliant films from various departments, 
telling you a little bit about what it's like to study their subject. And, and some of those films, for example, will feature former students who have gone on and done all sorts of wonderful things and are reflecting back on how their experience at Beads has helped them in their future careers. So have a really good rummage through that website. There's some brilliant films on there. Also talk to some useful and interesting people who are in the school. Mrs. Waterhouse, your, your year head at the moment, a wise and uh, insightful person who's got so much to help you with and so much that she can advise and guide you with. Next year, your year heads will be Mr. Henham and Mr. Cheshire. So turn to them. What Mr. Henham doesn't know about making courses work isn't worth knowing. He's a brilliant guy, Mr. Cheshire, fantastic team. They will give you all the help and guidance that you can require. I'm available, and I'm always, sorry, one of my old photographs of myself, I'm available, and I'm always available to help and guide students. I'd far rather be talking to a student about their A-level choices than dealing with spreadsheets, or whatever it is I spend the rest of my life doing. So please turn to these people and utilize them as much as you can. So some final advice, and it's, it's, it's hopefully advice that's worth bearing in mind. So parents, I would say, don't underestimate the influence that you can have on your children. They pretend they don't care what you say, they pretend they're not listening, but they are. But also remember, parents, these aren't your courses. It's your children's courses. And you might think it would be fantastically interesting to study history, but if your child has no interest in history, it's gonna be a pretty grim two years. I always wanted to to study Latin. I really regret not studying Latin. I've had to stop myself from trying to force it on my children throughout their school careers. I'm still hopeful one of them might do it. But the point is, these are about the, the students choosing their courses that work for them, having hopefully taken on board the advice that's available to them. And as I've said to the students out there, please listen to your parents. Please listen to your teachers and be sensible in absorbing that information and that advice they give you. But at the same time, remember, these are your qualifications. My final piece of advice is that this shouldn't be a stressful experience. This should be something which is enjoyable, which is fun, which is exciting, because it's thinking about what might lie ahead. It's starting to narrow down and think about the future a little bit. And who doesn't want to think about what they might be doing in the future? what exciting opportunities might lie ahead for them. It's a brilliant and exciting time. So I say to you all, all the students in particular, I say really, really good luck as you start to make these choices, as you start to think about what might lie ahead and have a fantastic time doing that. Have a fantastic time contemplating the opportunities in front of you. And always, always, always think of the brilliant chances and possibilities and opportunities that you have. Thank you very much, and I hope the rest of the day is really useful to you. Hi there, my name is Charlotte Sutton, and I'm one of the head of sixth form here for engagement um, at Bead School. Um, so I just want to welcome you uh, to the open morning this morning. Hopefully you've got a nice cup of tea, you're sat down, and you're enjoying all of these talks. Um, so I have the best job, in my opinion, here at the school, uh, because quite simply, the sixth form is the best two years of your life. Um, but I'm somewhat biased, probably. Um, it would be easy now to bombard you with statistics and facts all about our sixth form and inspirational quotes, but to be honest, you can get quite a lot of that from our literature. And what I want to do this morning is probably just try and give you a window into what sixth form life is really like uh, for the students um, and what the benefits are um, for, for kind of continuing your study here. Um, our ethos is simple. Our job is to prepare you for what comes next and to make sure that you make the very most out of your sixth form journey. This is the time when you are going to change the most. Um, who you are now is not who you are going to be at the end of those two years. And we have a real privilege to guide you through that time. Um, you will grow intellectually, you will redefine your skills as artists and dancers and sportsmen and writers. Uh, your taste will change completely. You're likely probably to have about four different hairstyles and look back in 10 years and regret at least seven of your outfit choices. Trust me on that one. The question I probably get asked the most at these kind of events is, how would you describe a bead sick former? 
This, quite frankly, is an impossible question to answer uh, because every sick format is an individual um, and therefore we treat them as such. Which means what people are doing is probably asking me the wrong question, um, but of course I don't say that. Uh, the right question is probably, what do we do to help our sick formers become who they really want to be? Uh, of course, that's a great question. Um, and I can answer this for you in a, in a fairly straightforward way. Um, so imagine you are on the New York City subway. Now the rules are pretty clear. When it comes to carrying animals on the New York subway, it states, no person may bring any animal on or into any conveyance or facility unless enclosed in a container. The rules, however, say nothing about the size of the animal. And as a result, um, to, afford a fine, um, to avoid a fine, sorry, New Yorkers got really creative, and I really love this. Um, they put dogs in rucksacks. They carried their dogs around like babies. Um, also that they could make sure that they could still use a subway and get the most and enjoy their pets and let them to do it too. I know what you're thinking, what is she going on about? She's lost it. Why is she talking about this? Because like these owners and their dogs, every student is an individual. Every one of our students will interpret our rules differently, trust me, and everyone will require something quite different from the sick form. They are true individuals. And that I think is vital that we kind of start to treat our students as individuals. This means that we listen and cater specifically for each person's needs and we work hard to get them to where they truly want to be. We give them a personalised service, supporting them pastorally, stretching them academically and increasing their level of autonomy and independence throughout this time as they start to become young adults. As a result, our sick form will both surprise and challenge you, and it's a really exciting time and one where you should take hold of every single opportunity. Uh, a sick form is really different to a college. We focus on the individual and make sure that we know and understand you and treat you with maturity and respect throughout every sphere of school life from tutoring to all of your different subjects. It's really vital that you start to grow in independence so you're ready for that next stage. We understand that you want to break free as students during this time. Um, so we believe in independence of action. So this means we give our sick formers independence with purpose. So whether it's organising socials, whether it's academically thinking about how your timetable works and the shape of your day, getting you ready to excel in those next steps for your life beyond beads. Academically, we have over 30 courses uh, across A-levels and BTECs. Students are given five hours a week in each subject with uh, their teachers giving them individualised support. Our staff are highly qualified and passionate, all of the things that you would expect. Um, and here at Bees, we really encourage you and think carefully about the courses that you are going on to do. And so we really value those conversations that you'll have uh, with Mr. Henham about your subject choices. And this is something that uh, Mr. Abrams will talk to you about in a few minutes. All sick form also, also take part in the Beads Diploma. The area of sick form life allows students time to kind of focus on their next steps. Um, you will meet our career staff. You'll talk about internships and work experience, profiling and interview practice, and also take part in Futures Week, which is a really big part um, of getting re ready for that next stage. You'll get additional support in things like UCAS. Um, you'll look at gaining other courses which give you university accreditation, such as an EPQ or the Arts Award, Sports Academies and Legat, or something like Financial Education and Further Maths. Uh, the diploma enables students to give back um, through volunteering to their community, whether that be within school, around Sussex or in the wider world. Um, and you also get to experience lots of different lectures and seminars, whether it be from speakers like Nelson Mandela's bodyguard, past alumni, doctors beyond borders, explorers and entrepreneurs. Students are given practical skills such as leadership, critical thinking, resilience, time to focus on how do I speak well in public. We really want students to understand what may be the areas that they'd like to improve on and how do they go about doing that within that two years and really getting support from their tutors who really know them best to be able to do that. The diploma isn't just a tick, uh, tick boxing exercise, it's something that 
enables you to go above and beyond. It gives you the chance to take the time to think about what am I doing and where am I going and what skills do I need to refine to get there? Now, I keep going on about this idea that we try to make sure that our students are as prepared as possible. Um, and this leads me on to talking about things like a healthy work-life balance. Being part of the Bead Sit Form is a really great opportunity to get involved in so many different spheres of school life. The Sit Form really is its own little environment and hub. Um, so the best part about the Sit Form is the fact that the students lead it. So whether it be social events, running things such as casino nights, uh, to construction challenges, yoga, to climbing. Uh, this year we've had to be more creative. We're going to run 10 different escape rooms, all happening, happening at the same time, socially distanced, um, to show that socialising can still carry on in a safe but meaningful way so that our sick formers can meet lots of new people. Um, and there's nothing too big or too strange. The more ideas that students have and come to me with, uh, the more exciting it is to try and make them happen. To help make all of these things kind of come to fruition, our prefects, whether that be in-house or senior school prefects, really help to drive initiatives, whether they be on well-being um, and things like mental health, whether it be on inclusion and, in uh, and equality, or things like social events. They really make sure that initiatives take place and make big changes in the school happen that will last for a long time. At Beads, being a prefect isn't just kind of like a buzzword which helps on a UCAS statement. It really does mean something and giving our students leadership opportunities is vital to kind of make sure that the sick form drives itself forward and that students are ready for the outside world. Our course, uh, of course, it's our job to ensure that we have incredible sick form facilities, uh, one of which I'm standing in right now, uh, which is the sick form centre, with its ever popular costa machine. You get independence through having priority in things like the library and private study on activity afternoons. Um, but what's most important is that the sick form has its own identity. We are, of course, a part of the school, but are separate at the same time often driving things forward. And as a result, in the sick form, you have a lot of privileges, which I think that you'll really enjoy taking hold of. Through all of these exciting opportunities, we aim to cater for students' heads, hearts, and hands, instilling in them humility and discipline, respect and teamwork, leadership qualities, and of course, passion and enjoyment. Sick form life is a real journey and it can be challenging and exhilarating, but I promise you that you will never laugh as much, make better friends or surprise yourself more. Uh, so thank you so much for listening and you're now going to hear from Nick Abrams about the academic side of the sick form. What are you looking forward to being when you're older? Are you thinking of being a lawyer? Are you thinking of being a doctor? Maybe you want to work in media. Maybe you just want to be rich. I have a lot of sympathy for that one. Maybe you're thinking when you're older, what you'd like to be as a teacher. Hmm, not sure that you should follow that route. But you maybe have many dreams and hopes of what you want to be in the future. Or maybe right now, you're not entirely sure. And that's why uh, here at Beads, we're going to help you through that process as much as possible. Because whatever you decide to do, what you're going to really want is the best grades possible to try and achieve that. But also some inspiration, you know, find that thing that is really you. Maybe you haven't decided just yet and you want to find that thing that's really you. And that's what we're going to be here to do as well. And the third thing that we're very good at doing is making sure that we give you the support and preparation to go to the best university possible. And that's what I'm going to talk to you today about is all the things that we do here at Bees to make sure that you have the best possible chances and keep the most doors open so that you can pick what you want to do later on in life. So let me just talk to you about our academic programs here at the school. We have a range of A-levels and BTECs that you can follow in the sixth form. There's a thousand and one combinations that you can possibly do. And what we want to do is do essentially two things. Number one, find the subjects that you like to do the most. If you really want to do it every day, then waking up early in the morning or going to bed late at night and getting some homework done, it's going to be easy for you because you really want to do those subjects. And the second thing that we want to do is not just find a subject that you really enjoy doing, but also find a subject that you're going to do really well in. And that's our challenge here at Beads and the thing that we look to make sure that we have every pupil doing is subjects they really enjoy doing and subjects that they're going to get amazing grades in as possible. But that's only part of the picture. The second part of the picture is giving you some inspiration. You're trying to fire something inside of you that goes, you know what, I'd really like to do this later on in life. And when you're 16 years old or 15 years old, who knows what you want to do later in life? Some people might be like, well, I've always wanted to be a doctor. Well, great. 
you know, it's fantastic if you've already decided what you want to do. But, you know, I think for many people, you don't really know what you want to do when you're 15 and 16. And you're waiting for somebody to say something or maybe you're going to hear something. And maybe you won't work it out until much later in life. But it's okay. What we're going to do is keep as many doors open as we possibly can. And we're going to find you different things you can get involved with. Maybe you'll end up going to the Madrid Street courts down in Brighton and suddenly you'll, you'll see something there that really inspires you. Maybe you'll end up going to a maths lecture up in London and then all of a sudden you sort of, you learn something. And you know, oh yeah, I'd really like to follow that one. You know, maybe you're sat there, you're doing a filmmaking course and you've got some videos getting shown on YouTube and you're building up a channel there. And it's, you know, it's starting to something that gets more and more interested in you. But there's a thousand and one things to get involved in. That's what we want you to do when you get here to Beads. Try multiple things out. Try as much out as you possibly can. And maybe one of those will just fire something inside of you, some fire, some imagination. Well, the third thing that I said on my list is helping you get to the best university you want. And not just the best university, the university you really want to go to, the one that you've picked yourself. Because that's the person who's important here. It's you, and it's what you want to do. And right now, you might not be clear what you want to do. But, you know, as time goes on, you might go, oh, well, I'd quite like to go to a university in London. Or I might like to give it a go at going to Oxford or Cambridge. Or, you know, I've got these dreams of going to university in America. Whatever your dreams are, we've got a cracking team who are going to help you achieve those goals. We've got a six-form team who are there to make sure that you get supported, that your academic progress is monitored every single time. We've got your heads of department really looking out for your academic uh, life at that point in time as well. We've got heads of faculty who really take a close interest in getting you that inspiration, getting you those skills equipped there. But what does that mean in practice? Well, what it means in practice is that we're going to help you from very early on. We're going to make sure that your university references are as strong as possible. We're going to make sure that your predicted grades are realistic, but as strong as we can possibly make them to make you have that outstanding chance to get to some of those top universities. We've got teams here at the school, you know, I'm sat here in the sixth form centre, it's a beautiful sixth form centre, and it's here, you know, you're going to sit here with a cup of coffee, you're going to be working with the sort of higher education advisors or the member of the sixth form team, or your tutors, you're going to be choosing universities, you're going to be going to visit them. Sadly, at the moment, it's all virtually visiting them, but hopefully by the time you're here, you'll be able to go and see them in person. You're going to work with our team to make sure that you've chosen in the university that you really want to do and you've got the best possible application to get there and then beyond that you know once it all sort of completes you know there'll come a day where we say goodbye to you and you'll be going on to these universities or be going on to wherever you want to go in the world and we'll say goodbye but hopefully we would want to see you back here again because we often get former pupils back here to come and talk to the pupils who are here to sort of say to them look this is what i ended up doing this is sort of how my life panned out this is what i'd advise you to do and it's quite really nice to have that sort of completion there where people who have gone onwards have come back here and share their experience and share their things with uh, other students here so, summing up, as it were, uh, I'm here to, you know, say to you that if you come to Beads, you're going to be supported to leave as many doors open as possible, to make sure that we try and fire some excitement within you that's going to make you want to either choose this route or choose this route, or, you know, have different routes that you want to pick there. And we're going to make sure that you get the best grades possible to achieve those. And then when it comes to your university applications, we're on hand not quite 24 seven, but sometimes it might feel like that to make sure that you have the best possible university application and end up going to where you want to go. Because that's what we want you to do is go where you want to go. We've got a bit of a motto here at the school, which is um, shoot for the moon. And if you miss, you'll land among the stars. And I think that's a good motto to have that sometimes you just want to go for that thing that's just slightly out of reach. Now, it might feel out of reach, but actually it might not be. And even if it is, you'll still land among those stars. Hello, my name is Deborah Franks and I head up the Careers and Employability Service here at Beads. Um, I work with all of our students from the first year up until the upper six. Um, but what I'd like to do is just share with you a little bit about what to expect in the sixth form um, from our service. So Careers and Employability is around working with our students to develop their careers information, their education, their information and advice and guidance to think about their next steps beyond beads. I work predominantly with students where university is not their first choice. So it may be that they're looking to enter straight into the workplace. It might be that they're looking for an apprenticeship, thinking about a gap year, or are thinking about university, but on a more vocational, professional um, course. Much of my work will be supporting our students to look at what extra things they can do and what extra things they need to do to support uh, their UCAS applications and to support their 
passion and interest um, in a particular subject. Um, but fear not, I also work with a lot of students that have not very much idea at this point as to what they want to do beyond beads or any particular um, ideas of a career or profession that might be for them. Um, what I do do is a lot of action plans. So I spend a lot of one-to-one -one, um, time with students. Uh, my record goes from having a student in for about 20 minutes um, to 10 one-hour sessions. Um, so um, my um, resource and time um, depends on the individual student and their needs. And some of the work that we might do on a one-to-one -one might be around personality quizzes. It might be around career profiling. Um, looking and working with the students so they understand their motivations, um, what puts a bit of fire in their belly, what's going to make them want to get up in the morning and go to work or do that profession, um, and to start looking at their individual employability skills, their interests and their personal ethics, and then start to develop a pathway and an action plan that is going to help support them and hopefully motivate them through their A-levels um, onto the next step beyond beads. We also do quite a lot of employer engagement work. So um, I run a lunchtime seminar programme where we have a wide variety of employers that will come in and now remotely um, do seminars and um, Q&A sessions with us. And we've had anything from doctors to engineers. Last week, uh, we had a session booked in with American Express. Um, we've had... Um, screenwriters, we've had editors, uh, we've had sports people come in, we've had physiotherapists come in. So just a wide range, um, depending on student need and student interest at that time. Um, I also work with students around developing their pre-employment skills. So looking at application forms, developing their competencies and understanding their teamwork skills, how important those are, their communication skills, their leadership skills, um, and also looking at what employability skills they need to develop uh, going on to the workplace. I also do a lot of practice on mock interview skills and preparation for how the world of work works looking at how competitive the, uh, the industries might be and thinking around how they might need to present themselves, market themselves to make their future brilliant. So thank you to Miss Sutton, thank you to Mr Abrams and thank you to Mrs Franks. I hope you've enjoyed hearing all of us tell you a little bit about what the sixth form will look like and also I hope you're going to enjoy starting to think about what your particular sixth form journey might be like over the coming years. So that's the start of the day. It's now your chance to go and meet some of the heads of departments of the subjects in which you might be studying. So if you've made those bookings, please enjoy those discussions with them. But of course, also remember that they're open and available to you whenever you might like to talk about their subjects. They're all people who are desperate to see students come into their subjects really, really want to spread the word of why their subjects are the ones you should be thinking of. So have a good day. It's the start of what I hope will be a brilliant two years in the sixth form. Thank you very much indeed.